Um, this talk will be about squeezing efficient and small next containers into Nomad. So it kind of relates to what we had before. Um, well, I'm known as Magic Garby online and Richard Drejak in real life. Uh, I've been working as a contractor at Serocal for a year, about just, and uh, since se September, I'm a full-time bachelor student uh, at the VU in Amsterdam. And since roughly June, after convincing them, I've been working on Nomad Bring Up at Serocal. Um, so if you don't know what Nomad is, the other word for Nomad is Kubernetes. Uh, it's essentially the same thing, just by a different company and uh, works in a bit different way. Uh, the difference between Nomad and Kubernetes, if I had to like, summarize it, would be that uh, Kubernetes, uh, where Kubernetes uses many different types of workloads. If you want to like, de deploy things differently, Nomad has a switch. So it's very extensible and works in a different fashion than Kubernetes, which means uh, it's a bit buggy, since it like, can distribute and stuff, uh, but it's getting better uh, really fast. It's actually quite stable at this point. Um, so I think that even though we're like NixOS people, uh, containers are kind of the future. Um, with putting NixOS on plain VPSs, you have to worry about topology. You have to worry about uh, cross-service um, interaction and configuration time, because even though like the module system should ensure that um, if you change one option for Nginx, it doesn't affect Apache, that's not always the case. And uh, also, VPSs generally uh, tend to be too big if you want to buy them efficiently. So if you want to separate your services uh, onto different systems, you're wasting resources. So that's what containers can help us with. Um, and so, for example, these are the statistics from Serocal. You can see that we have two build servers, which, uh, as you would expect, have large disks and are mostly full. Um, then we have uh, the uh, we have we have the something uh, which I can't name, and uh, generally like everything else is below uh, disk usage wise like below fifty percent, and most things except for a few other things which uh, memory wise are above uh, fifty, which in this case is just vault and the miscellaneous stuff which just holds a lot of random things we didn't have any, any place else to put. So we could easily um, consolidate everything into containers and save a lot of resources and that we're not really very painful about using. So the effect of switching, in my opinion, is less work for engineers because you don't have to worry about the topology and about the IPs and stuff like that. Um, you don't get the interactions between services that I mentioned. And with better packing, you can do have less machines and therefore save some money. And then we have a meme. Um, so like we were talking about at the last talk, uh, during the last talk, um, in my opinion, Docker tools and OCI tools are fundamentally flawed. Um, it's nice that we can interact with existing runtimes, but stuffing Nix uh, store paths into layers, which in the kernel, there is a limit of 128 uh, for overlay FS, which everyone essentially uses. It's a bit troublesome because it's common to have way more store paths than 128. Um, and therefore, you have to somehow um, choose a heuristic. Um, but uh, that's complicated. And also, to achieve a system where you're reusing the layers between different containers, you would have to have somehow do the uh, do the stuffing into layers outside the next so you can keep state between uh, individual containers. With the current solutions, so OCI tools and Docker tools in Nix packages, if you, for example, wanted to run a Hydra in a container, uh, the last layer will end up being 1.2 gigabytes in size. So if you change a config file, you're copying 1.2 gigabytes over the network. Um, yeah, also OverLFS has to do a lot of things to uh, merge folders, which it doesn't know anything about, but we do know that the store paths, they are first immutable, and second of the, they diverge at a very specific point in the directory hierarchy, so we can simplify lookup a lot. Um, then the next question is, what do we want to put inside the containers when we have figured out the store paths, which I'll come back to later. Um, 
So one option is NixOS, which we already have, uh, but NixOS is not really aiming to be small. It never was. Uh, it, by default, it uses systemd as the init and system manager, which can be changed, I'll get to that. Um, and also it's constantly changing, so if you want to do some large changes to it, it's hard to keep up and you have to do an RFC and everything, which is annoying. Um, so I tried this initially just by like, getting rid of it. Uh, you end up with essentially a Docker file, which is just a bash script. You have to create bin slash sh and all the other stuff. You also need a process reaper, so on, uh, normally people recommend uh, dump in it and a lot of other things. So you end up with a Docker file, essentially. Uh, we have the module system, so why don't we use it? And that's exactly what Arian tries to do. Uh, I have a few issues with this configuration, and I'll go over them. So we essentially just have to say hi to bash scripts again. Uh, the core of the module system is a bash script since uh, Arian uh, utilizes bash instead of systemd to re get rid of systemd to go to the setup. Um, the option boot dot is container in Nix, Nix OS is quite fun. If you want to figure out what it does, you have to grab the Nix packages repository to see where it's being accessed, um, which I don't think is ideal. It should be the other way around, but I see why it's not. Then this is just a personal thing, but like I think that the uh, the services in Nix OS they are fundamentally flawed, where the nginx module and the Apache module and a lot of other modules do way too many things, and it's really hard to know what they're actually doing. You have to read the 1.2K of lines to actually like, understand it, and even then it's not easy to understand. So when I'm doing stuff, I go a bit more minimal. And then we have the return of bash, where there are things done which should not be done by bash, like setting up etc, um, uh, etc pass wd, or like bsh and stuff like that. Or oh, bsh is actually being set up in Arian. Um, this thing should not be done by Bash, it should be done by the module system, we have it for that reason. And then just a minor gripe, I don't think that putting uh, what I would consider physical configurations like the ports, uh, or whether to use the host store inside the config for the container itself is a good idea, it should be separate from the container. So the question is whether we even should be adapting NixOS. Uh, in the normal world, we see Debian, uh, Arch, Ubuntu, and I have a typo there, um, versus Alpine. And I don't think I see Debian being adapted into something which we can put into containers. Debian is just taken if you need it. But generally, it's recommended to use Alpine as far as I know. So on our end, we have NixOS and kind of nothing. And that's what I've been doing for a year, um, kind of slowly. We have, well, I have this distribution called NixNG, maybe Blood, the name is debatable. Um, it's a NixOS inspired GNU Linux distribution, which was made for container specifically. So currently it uses Runit, which isn't great, uh, but that will change someday. Uh, it's stable, it works, uh, it can run a lot of things. Uh, the modules, they generally correspond to NixOS modules one-to-one. -one. Um, and uh, as for the testing, we talked about NixOS tests in VMs. If we got support for user namespaces in uh, the Nix, uh, Nix build, <laughs> uh, we could do it through containers with this. So, um, the point is of NixNG is that it's an experimentation ground, at least has been for me. So I invite all of you to come and do something weird. I don't really mind the weirdness in the repository as of now. It's a way smaller code base, so you don't need to change as many things, and you're also less likely to break something if you change something. Um, I think the deviation from NixOS is good at this point because NixOS has gotten quite large. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm saying that we need to experiment with new things again. And that's what you can do here. So what about the layers? Let's get back to that. Um, there's this thing called erase your darlings, which essentially means that you do not have anything in the OTFS but the Nix store. And the Nix boot system sets up everything. And we can do that in the containers themselves uh, using bind mounts. So we can run the OneFS in either Kubernetes, which I'm not familiar with, I don't like, or we can run it in Nomad, HashiCorp Nomad, I mean. Um, and uh, Nomad has a notion of task drivers. So the nice thing is that you can take literally anything, even a punch card reader, 
and hook it up to Nomad and it will run it. It doesn't care. So I've built a experimental driver which takes the container the driver by Roblox, uh, tapes on Nix and hope it works um, and hopes it works. Uh, it actually works though. It has a few bugs, but those bugs come from the, come from the original task driver, not my changes. Uh, but it's still great as a proof of concept. With the simplicity of no match task drivers, we can do literally anything. We could use bubble wrap. Uh, we can even do it in Rust, since it's over gRPC. We can adapt the Docker driver in Nomad itself, which is the most stable out of them all, uh, since you can actually force Docker to run rootfs if you're very smart about it. And we can also directly just call run C or any other option you can think of. So, and what we get by using Nomad is that we get interop with Docker containers for absolutely nothing. Uh, Nomad's design allows all types of tasks to, if, they're, if the task driver is set up correctly, which isn't hard to do, uh, they can interop uh, via the network, via file system, and via, they, they can also like mount volumes over NFS. So we don't lose any functionality, we just lose some size and annoyance. And as for the future, well, the task driver makes work, a lot of work. Um, it works, I've been using it. Uh, it's been running in a state of not doing anything at Seroka for a while, it's stable. Uh, but most work is needed in, in NixNG itself. Um, I think that the rename is due because the name doesn't really roll off the tongue. Um, and also we need a new init system because run it is not amazing because it boils down to bash scripts again. Um, my idea was to write something new and uh, experimental. Uh, we could do the, uh, we have a lot, we could use lots of processes communicating over something standardized like MQTT, for example. And then the processes would ask the others to do something and we could easily replace them one by one with other languages or other implementations if we hold to a spec. So that's all. And uh, I have to thank Seroka, of course, for allowing me to be here. My friend from Bratislava who helped me with the, with the initial design of this presentation. Two people, two people from the NixOS Discord server, one for proofreading and one for running a test version of this thing for a while. My dad, who not, doesn't know anything about Nomad for listening to my ranks. And my friends in uni suffering through the initial versions of this talk, which was just me looking at my notes and trying to say something. So yeah, that's all. You can contact me on Matrix via email and the laptop just died. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if you want to contact me, then come talk to me. I'll give you my email and my matches and everything. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good timing. So yeah. That's very energy efficient, actually, because we're not using any more power than necessary, apparently. <laughs> Are there any questions? No questions? Yes. Um, I think you briefly mentioned that you were using the Nixos modules that look kind of that mirror the existing Nixos modules, uh, but I guess they're based on uh, Nomad service runners in some way. Um, mm, no, it's, it's separate. So, like, if you have the users dot users option in Nixos, NixNG does the same thing, but its own way. Since I'm not using System D, I can't rely on System D. Uh, but the modules are close enough where you could feasibly uh, make a transpiler from uh, NixOS configurations or modules uh, from a subset, right? From a subset of NixOS, the option set, to the options of NixNG and get it to somehow work. If you look on my GitHub for the, for example, the Hydra module, there is a header, um, MIT license code begins here, and then 500 lines later, ends there. So like, I just literally copied part of the NixOS module into my own module. It's really similar. You just have to, the, generally only the config changes because you don't use systemd. Okay, so, so the, implement, uh, the interface is about the same, but the implementation is, is yeah. different. Yeah, you can All keep right. the interface about the same, but like, you don't have to, that's the nice thing. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you again, Richard. Or No, no, it just looked like you wanted to raise your hand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you again, Richard.